Hi everyone! Today I want to talk to you about the arrangement and style of the article that we just read, which was social media and activism, and show the, some of the reasons why it's a very professional, neat article that gives it legitimacy as a source. At least, you know, if you're trying to really like learn, um, learn from like scholarly sources, like it does, it has all the different towels from the way it is formatted and what he says. So we're going to go to the title page first. Um, this actually gives a legi leg legitimacy to this document itself, um, since it's saying it came from someone who was from the school and um, Googled it, definitely real place, and that they are open and do that, have this image here. Um, makes it easier for the reader to not only have faith in this article, but to access more articles like it. And here too, the style is very much like legalese, like this copyright. Um, users may download and or print one copy of any article, articles. Um, the parenthesis of the S and and or here usually are tells like, oh, this is a telling you what you can and cannot do. And they usually like I usually find these kind of things um, in articles that in, in sections that are like trying to like tell the reader like the legal aspects of like what they have permission to do and what they do not have permission to do and like because they can't really control the reader they you know are say like how many like the reader has read instead of just putting one or the other like putting these um these here like it, it kind of like this is meant for the reader to know like what they can on they can and cannot do so yeah that gives this whole uh, document more legitimacy and then the second page you know they um the arrangement and separating it by abstract and keywords and biography like all of that is standard um standard practice for papers like this like having an abstract having a section for that and having these so that you're better able to find the document itself if it was in a journal or an online resource which this obviously is as seen up here where they give you um information how to find more articles like that online and the style here of listing all the different jobs and books that he's he's written, um, that affects the reader writing, being able to say like, oh, he's done other stuff before, and it has to do with um, what he's talking about here, like that's a protest and media, then that's fantastic. And so we proceed, and he's got a PhD, awesome. Okay, so the arrangement of having different themes throughout and also like he does like bullet points and numbers and tables let me bring out tables that make uh makes the overall impression that this is very neat and very like thought about very well like thought through um paper um gives me more reason to believe like oh this guy knows what he's talking about like he's done the research he's taken the time to arrange this in this way and I wanted to talk a little bit about the style of one of the paragraphs that interested me the most to show how he is very professional and how he speaks. Oh no, it went away. It didn't highlight anymore. So I think it was on page six. So we're going to scroll back up. Yep. Okay. So it says, closely linked to Sal Salvescent's social media provide an archive, a memory, a repository of text and audio, visual, symbolic content related to protests, tactics, organizations, and ideas. And these self-mediations of protesters and activists contribute to a global archive of protest artifacts. Okay, so I will let you read the rest if you'd like. Um, oh, well. I also just want to really quick highlight the feeding struggles and contributing to a collective memory of protest. So using words like artifacts, which... Um, in intro to literacy artifacts it, it it had like a larger meaning of like we create artifacts we create um we create this thing even though like my connotation is like oh people like get those up from a they they dig it out like 
like professors and archaeologists dig that out of a hole and it's like no like this is uh, recontextualizing art, um, artifacts to work here as well um, and that so it's also like just a very like sounds like a professor word you know and let's see there's also the audio visual visual symbolic content relating to protests tactics organization ideas and what comes solidarity or how in china they use like hashtag rice bunny to talk about the me too movement or emojis to further those ideas that protest ideas through like because they have to suffer through censorship which is something that we take for granted here that we don't get censored in that way even though we it's kind of a gray area there like we um but i suppose like what i'm trying to say in this style of like auditory visual visual symbolic content that's a very vague statement on purpose and it shows that he like knows it's not just tweets um that it's images it's emojis it's all sorts of stuff that help that help with this idea of like protest and how like the idea gets through in social media and so yeah and so i suppose um having the style of like dealing with these broad ideas with broad brushes but getting specific in certain spaces certain places like he talks about tactics and moral, uh, student protests in the united kingdom in 2011 he gives a spe specific event right here and that's a good that's a good uh stylistic choice to like go with this big idea um in the like general sorry in the generalization of like what's what's going on there um, after like talking about like some specific ideas right here and he also like links very well paragraph to paragraph which if I'm right that would be an arrangement choice and yeah that's all I really thought I'll see you all in the next video